I'm Corey Johnson for Torah.com. We're with uh, Lieutenant Dan Choi, and uh, we're at the National Equality March here at the Congre Congressional Cemetery for Letter Matlevich um, and a memorial that's going to be taking place in just a few minutes. But we just left Arlington National Cemetery where there was the laying of the wreath, um, and it was uh, for the Nights Out LGBT organization. Dan, you laid one of the wreaths uh, today. Um, what was it like to be there in Arlington with this organization, which you're a big part of, to get that recognition? Well, sometimes when the story and our movement exists largely in the media or just on, a, on blogs or on the internet, it's hard to understand the kind of pain and injury that's out there for so many soldiers that aren't recognized, that aren't acknowledged for who they are, or they have to lie about who they are. Uh, we went there to honor all of the soldiers, everybody, and we took our rightful place in doing that as a part of America. And so I think it meant a lot because for so long we have been the unknown soldiers. We have been the soldiers that could not be acknowledged for who we truly are. And so to just do that and to take part in something like that I think was so meaningful beyond what we do today. But we know that people later on in future generations will also know that in 2009 when discrimination was still rampant we stood up and we stepped out. We didn't listen to the people that said, oh, don't demand too much, don't cry out, you guys sound like you're complaining. This is our duty. This is our responsibility. And those people that are the detractors saying you shouldn't be doing these things, I would say, you don't answer to me. You don't answer to the people that are living right now. You answer to the future generations that are judging you. You came out very publicly on MSNBC and Rachel Maddow's show. Uh, after that, uh, you learned from the military that you were going to be uh, discharged under Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And you have become a, a very visible spokesperson uh, for repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell nationally, um, speaking out on this quite frequently. What has it been like personally for you, sort of the very fast ascent from that moment up until today, all that time, what's it been like for you? You know, we didn't really expect that we would have as much attention as, as we are having now when we just started. All we wanted to do was to reach out to some of the other cadets at West Point or the West Point graduates and say that you're not alone. And to know that there are other people now that are not isolated, that don't have to feel like they're the only one, that don't have to live in shame, that makes it all worth it. It's not easy. It's not easy to have to go through all of this and uh, go through a discharge proceeding for you know, admitting the truth of who I am. And I've come out to my parents. My dad is a Southern Baptist minister. Both my parents immigrated from Korea, very conservative. They're from Orange County, California. And it's been a roller coaster. Uh, just about three days ago, I talked to my dad and, and he said, I've seen you on you know, CNN. and." I don't think he's at the point where he's listening to Toll Road, <laughs> Tom, yet. But you want Anderson, soon. Anderson Cooper show, uh, debating Elaine, uh, Elaine Donnelly. Right. Well, you handled yourself quite well on well, that interview. Well, thank you. Um, but it's really um, something that we have to do. We have to continue putting out the message and speaking up, particularly for the people that can't speak up for themselves. So while it's difficult to come out and to go through this, and a lot of people said it'll take a lot of time for people to understand, uh, certainly to accept you if they're anti-gay. The time is now, you have to come out now. Why would you wait a decade because it's just gonna take that much more time then? And, and uh, President Obama during his campaign and while he's been in office has said he supports the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. You've worked very closely with uh, the Service Members Legal Defense Network on this issue, on repealing it. This past week, Patrick Murphy, congressman from uh, Pennsylvania who is an Iraq War vet, uh, is the lead sponsor in repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell, went to the floor and discussed the issue. Harry Reid in the past few weeks has called on more leadership from the president in repealing it. What are the next steps that you see to actually uh, have the issue move forward in the legislative arena so it can actually get to President Obama's desk? Well, let me say before I say any of this, obviously me being in uniform right now, I want to make it very clear that I do not speak officially on behalf of military or government policy, but I want to speak to some of the 
military and American society's values. And I do think that I can speak to that uh, when I say that to come out and to be against a discriminatory policy like don't ask, don't tell is something I believe that's every congressman's responsibility. Every congressperson has to co-sponsor this now. And we've seen so many people now uh, contact their congressman and say, be a co-sponsor of the H.R. 1283 and tell your senator to bring it up so that there's a bill in the Senate. And I think when you see heroes like Congressman Murphy from a blue dog district taking up the banner, the first Iraq veteran to be elected to the House of Representatives, I think it speaks volumes and you're going to see a lot more pushing um, in the direction that we need to go. And if I can speak towards uh, the American values and what we see is going to be America in the future, we need to fight for this because of all the things that we can fight for, when we see discriminated people or people that have to lie in order to protect their country, I think that's the greatest injustice. So every congressperson is now, I would say, on notice. If you don't have what it takes to stand up and do the right thing right now, and you don't co-sponsor on that bill, then you are firing me, and you are forcing our soldiers, our service members, to lie. And history will remember you as the immoral ones that forced lying and dishonesty and a lack of integrity, full integrity, not only on our soldiers, but the rest of our society who would condone that. 34 years ago, before you and I were both born, uh, Leonard Matlevich uh, was discharged from the military, a Vietnam uh, vet in the Navy or in the Air Force. And uh, today there's a, a memorial here at the Congressional Cemetery. Uh, he was a leader in that time, not just on these issues, but he went down to Florida and worked on the ordinances in Miami-Dade against Anita uh, Bryant. Um, how does it feel to be here today, 34 years later, when someone who was working in a high-profile way just like you, and now you're following in his footsteps, how does it feel today? There's a sense of awe. There's a sense of responsibility, though, more than awe. Because we come here and we look at what has happened in our movement. We didn't just pop out of nowhere and start doing this. We're at a cemetery. Um, where we honor those who have come before and have passed away, but we really acknowledge the birth of this movement here at this cemetery. And also we want to give it a rebirth today because if Leonard was alive, he certainly would be fighting for all of the, uh, all of the things that will make us fully equal. Not just repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell, but he would be marching against Prop 8 in California and one in Maine and uh, against DOMA and wanting to get the uh, ENDA and uh, hate crimes bills passed. You know, he would be there because he understood from the very beginning this is our shared humanity. And I'm just proud to be here right now um, to know that it was started by him. And when I think about decades ago that it was started, we're in 2009 right now continuing on in the movement and somebody 30 years from now will look back on us just like we're here today and they'll say what did you do what were you doing did you come out and did you not only acknowledge the history but know where to take it from here and we have to demand we have to keep doing that because that's what honors him that's what honors Leonard thank you Lieutenant Dan Choi I'm Corey Johnson for Torah.com